Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here from the Knife Center, coming at you from Blade Show, from the Condor booth. We have the man himself, Joe Flowers, right here. D C A. That's what they're calling you now. <laughs> you have a presence. He has a presence. It is a little on bit. the knife forums. The D C A. I thought it was like a, a a crew of gangs or something. It might be. Anyway, we're here at the Condor booth with some. We're working knives. on his his D C A gang logos too Gosh. with knives. <laughs> Sorry guys, go ahead. <laughs> Um, with condor knives. Yes. Um. <laughs> and now I've ruined it. So, well, you know what? While he's laughing, I'm going to tell you about the 2021 line and Let's do his do job for him. This is a Polar North. It has a point down the center line. Um, it has a multiple use handle. Um, when your friend is laughing too hard, it works really well to stab with on the side. Just make sure not to cut yourself. But also, at least for me, David, I'm, I was never like a toil guy. Mm -hmm. And for a designer, I've got a lot of designs with Condor, like over 100 now. And I wanted to make sure I didn't get into a, a rut where I keep designing the same stuff. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try toil. And I like it. You know, it made me completely eat my, uh, what's it called, eat crow? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in response to that. So well, I really I like the toil on it, but it's a really good bushcraft machete. I found it works really well on this one, too, because when you, do, when you are choked up to do that sort of stuff, it's a little less twisty in the hand. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, it kind of stabilizes that a little bit. And then you got that great spot to choke back on the swing as well with it. You know, and this one's 2.5 millimeters thick, um, which isn't a lot of weight. It's a much lighter weight um, than a lot of normal machetes Condor comes out with. And so that twisting will be counterbalanced from that light, light, light weight. And so it really helps with the light machete. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Because oh, yeah, once yeah. it twists, it's going to keep it out. That's yeah. just what I think. But you got that great. This is the like one of the kind of archetypal type of survival machetes. Right. And he, about. if you guys want to know like a little uh, behind the thought process, what's important for a survival knife, uh, a bushcraft knife? They have a point down the center line, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, they're supposed to have a really ergonomic handle for high use. I'm going to take just some of those things, a continuous curve on the blade, for uh, some people like, and put those into a machete. And it turned out sexy. Polar North. Yeah, they did turn out quite nice. Quite I love nice. it. Next up. Oh, right. Uh, we got a, another Joe Flowers design. This is a Seagrin. Um, I wanted to see it, uh, a tactical sax, 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 um, however the proper way to say it is, um, because I really like the point, um, but I felt like, man, it could really lend itself to the outdoors a little bit more, to the tactical world. And if you get that point just right, there's some really cool stuff going on there. Yeah. Plus, it's straight, and it looks cool, too. looked even cooler when we put on a fuller. Well, just kind of the shearing power as you're moving through a cut yeah. of that kind of tip right there. Like even without having anything to cut through, you can kind of feel what that's going to do. Right, and you know, it's, of course me, I'm thinking about it bushcraft wise, I can totally uh, carve out a notch for a, a oh, hole yeah. with that or like a fire drill uh, board. We always talk about that for the point. Oh Ooh, yeah. All day long. N because of that narrow tip, that notching, get your thumb even behind it, do a yeah. little pushing with it, yeah. Absolutely. Now this nice comfy handle on it too. Very yeah, ergonomic. it's it's kind of like a rework of some of the uh, older handles we had on like the Final Frontier. A little bit more uh, Coke bottle shape, skeletonized underneath with the welded pommel. So absolutely awesome stuff. Yeah, very cool indeed. And leather sheath with this guy, I'm assuming. No, Kydex sheath. Oh, M multi-use Kydex sheath. You can clip it off, flip it over, put it in there. Excellent. Um, really, really neat uh, a setup. And I kind of wanted a little bit of the uh, sack style, but um, I'm gonna come out with one next year with a little bit crazier leather on it. Maybe. Very cool. Is it getting a button going? Keep <laughs> asking. Next one. There very, we go. very nice design, very nice design. Next All right, up. Okavango. This is by, um, I have to check my notes here because it's by Juan. Uh, Juan, I cannot pronounce his last name sometimes. Good luck. Kagampang? Kagampang. Kagampang? Kagampang. Yes, Kagampang. Kagampang? Kagampang? Yes. Maybe. So, yeah, so this is, a, um, this is actually called the Okavango uh, hunting knife, but it's um, designed by a designer who's had a couple of designs with us before. Um, Juan Kavaping. Kavaping? I'm sorry, Juan, uh, I am butchering your last name. But uh, he's done design work for some other companies too, and we brought him back to try something with our new 440C mm -hmm. stainless steel. So this is a, a hunting knife that's very, very um, grippy for when your hands are covered in blood. It's small enough to be able to work inside the body cavity of, for me, at least deer, um, which I'm gonna have some more jerky after we're done. Oh, Got a whole bunch of venison excellent. on the bottom. 
Yeah, quite nice. Choils are probably a little small for my big fingers. Yeah. But I like the crowning that's been done here to keep mm -hmm. that kind of comfortable and not too pinchy there. Good EDC shape too, I would say. So we, we've got a couple of things happening there and here. We've got a lot of finger grooves going on. Mm -hmm. And, and um, this is a Credo knife by Tony Lennartz. And he incorporates uh, um, in some of his designs a lot of finger grooves. And, and DCA, I was not a finger groove person, but that's another thing where I wanted to jump out of a uh, design. Uh, real quick, this is a shotgun design, and we incorporated finger grooves into that. So you'll be seeing finger grooves on some of the stuff. It's, it's hard to pull off a finger groove to make stuff feel ergonomic. So that, that was and my that goal. that works with a lot of different hands. Right, well, that, that's well. a good point too, to have the meat sausage fingers versus the dainty uh, uh, fingers and stuff too. So there, there's a way to, to bring out, this is um, the shotgun machete or departure um, Volo machete. Uh, it was just a really beefy, thick, froggy um, design that I wanted to make. Again, I'm trying to break some rules here, so I put a choil yep. in and, and finger grooves. Dude, yep. I got no machete designs with finger grooves. Why? I can't be that dis dismissive. All blades matter. I like the tail it's end of there. that too. It looks like it's yeah. going to swing really yeah, nicely. Yeah, and you yeah. can use it from the back too. Yeah, very I didn't nice. mean to jump off, but you no, know, we have, right. we have right. you know, two different designs here that have wonderful finger grooves. So this guy, we got uh, G10, it looks like? Uh, no, this is actually black paper, my car does. No kidding, okay. Yep. All right, all right. And yeah, it's the Credo. And check it out, he's finally got really, really pretty, like, it looks like a Marvel uh, a hologram we'll card or something. Back. Steel on this guy, is this also 440C That stainless? is 420 C 420, okay. Stainless. Yes. Very cool, very cool. Uh, speaking of, like, the EDC fixed blades here, tell me about so that guy. Th this guy is kind of important. This is actually dedicated to a person I worked very close with, um, Carlos, um, and this is dedicated to him. He actually died from COVID, and he was like in his 20s, like 25, and it just affected him really bad, and he passed away from uh, COVID. And we wanted to honor him by making a, a design in-house from Condor and name it the Carlitos, and this is our first Cerakoted knife, so now we mm. have Cerakote capabilities very as well. Nice. Very interesting sheath on that guy is that going to be kydex i or? believe so yeah, yeah. yeah um we don't have the sheaths for some of these right here because we had uh, a problem guys since covid some people in the knife industry and in, in the world around have had problems getting products because factories have been closed steel micarta i mean even bolts in some cases yeah, so yeah, yeah. sometimes you guys are going to see a big jump in multiple different machete manufacturers not having stock but we're finally doing something with that. Speaking of steel, what, what are these guys constructed from? Um, I believe those are going to be made out of 1075 or, um, yes, 1075. Well, guys, I have a cheat thing here because um, we just got some new steel. Yeah. 14C28N, um, and I didn't know if we were messing with the Cerakote on that particular version. That's going to be a good, good, uh, good addition to the lineup. But being the carbon steel, of course, your uh, the Cerakote there is going to help with the Yeah, uh, big the time. And I'm, I'm really getting want to get my... Uh, my hands into some Cerakoting too. So I always like how you bring in a lot of influences from around the world and yeah. from history, which I see a lot of in this design right yeah, here. Yeah, you know, and 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 I, I really like representing, you know, my, my thoughts on some designs that are already out there and it's done really well for me. Um, but man, some of the things are just so hard to get in the US, I just want people to be able to get them. And one of those is a Japanese Nata, and I mean a serious wood handled Japanese Nata, not like mm -hmm. a Micarta one or, or a different take. And I ordered some, finally got them from Japan. They were incredible. They had some crazy designs though. Mm -hmm. A Japanese nada kind of literally, um, not literally, it, it, it translates to hatchet. And it's basically a splitting hatchet that's made for batoning, before batoning was cool. And so they have this massive hammer and I've got some crazy videos of these guys breaking apart shake boards for um, cedar and things along that line. Now what's going on with those was they had um, varying grinds. Some of them would be chisel. Mm -hmm. Some of them would be that like 60 degree, 30 degree, but they always had these different things and I wanted it to be a little bit more useful as a machete. They kind also a more general purpose take right, on it. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and it's also harder to do that because the left handers would want the chisel grind on the right side. We also made it full tang because that's much easier for us um, to ensure that's going to last longer. Mm -hmm. Instead of having a um, protection band up here, uh, we found it easier to put this braid on and it's um, actually really, really, really uh, um, uh, bolted in there. Um, okay. I, can't, I can't really tell you exactly how we do it. I know how. So this but, is more um, for decoration as well as like a little right. well, indexing no, we, spot? We, we smashed the crap out of it to make sure it was uh, uh, good to protect it. But that band 
in the on the old Japanese knot has actually helped uh, secure it on there. This way, it's a, a little bit different function, and it's all and it's all skeletonized too. But um, this is a really good take on an awesome Japanese tool. Yeah, yeah, you're right though. You don't see a lot of them here no, in the states, so they no, are a little. It's hard to find. Yeah. And the the wooden handle ones are awesome freaking tools. I definitely say if you guys can pick up one of these, but also. Um, maybe eBay or something, pick up an original. They go anywhere from $40 to $400. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, you can get some interesting things there. But Japanese yeah. nata. So baton, batoning, nada. Batonata. 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 Yeah. Batonata. And there's some knives when you just pick them up where you feel like it's ready to chop. This guy wants to chop. That was right my here. goal. It, I want him to feel to the knives and go, <laughs> I need to use them. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, there's nothing. Nah, we won't, we won't. We'll, we'll I have them. a chopping board in here. No, that's okay. Okay. So we picked up Jason Breeden. You guys may have known him from Spyderco, where else? Kaiser? Did you, did you do Kaiser? Number of, number of different designs. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, he did, yeah. um, uh, I can't remember who, a lot. Um, so check out Jason Breeden, who came out with the Mountain Pass series. Mountain Pass Axe, Mountain Pass Machete, Mountain Pass Knife, Mountain Pass Surveyors um, Machete. These have solid bolts, but they're actually going to be like this guy, the Corby bolt style. And these come with brown micarta handles. With the bolt-on construction. Correct. Yeah. In 1075 high carbon steel. New for this year. Personally, of course, this one speaks to me the most because I like machetes. This is a mountain pass machete. It's got an excellent shape to it. Too. Yes, like, absolutely. Some, a lot of machetes don't necessarily have sex appeal. Right, But right. this one I think does, that blade shape. It yeah. just, just has those kind of lines that, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, they do something to me. What can I say? <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there and, 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 and leave the awkward silence. Well, this is very interesting. Tell me, <laughs> tell me about this, uh, this um, style so of this knife So this is here. a what, surveyor. Yeah, where does this kind of fit Surveyors really use tools a lot. Um, consequently, they are really go-to people to talk about with machetes. Mm -hmm. um, this is a multi-use handled knife that can be used from behind, uh, uh, flipped over so you can use it along along this line for heavier chopping and then of course he's got a thinner blade here the real guy to talk to about this would be Jason Breeden though since he's a designer but you can definitely tell okay well what's that up there for oh okay well I can flip my knife over and, and, and do some so hard marks is that an actual sharpened edge there or it is a um it is sharpened yeah I don't know it's the first time I've hold, <laughs> held it so I know I've seen things like that where they're talking about it being like a bone breaker or yeah. something like that mm -hmm. yeah of course, it would be pretty easy to put an actual sharp edge, edge on there if you wanted to. Yeah. I could see this being a great camp food prep knife, too. Yeah, absolutely. A little, a little thick, maybe, but you could do it. Yeah. No, very cool. And all, all of them are going to be bolt-on, even the axe? Yep, yep. All yeah. of them. We're having a problem finding the right bolts right now because COVID. Um, but uh, uh, that, that's what we're working with. Very cool. Feels really good. Nicely finished. Yeah. Very I believe nice. they are coming with a leather sheath. I have to look at my cheat sheet because we got so many designs down here. Yeah, this is, is just a small sampling, guys, of the stuff. Yeah, uh, all some, that over there. No, you guys are fine. Some all of, that over there. Some of this here we do have already at the Knife Center. It's Woo! on our shelves ready to go. Buy it now. Buy it now. Holy Other crap, stuff yeah, dude. is still coming soon, but we'll leave a link to all of it down below. Joe? And guys, thanks, viewers, uh, for tuning in to him um, because it's been awesome to watch him grow on Knife Center. It's been great to see all the wonderful comments. It's been awesome to see uh, uh, that top top 10 designers thing. I was on that. That was number five selling, best selling designer me. at Knife Center. I could not this believe guy. that. And it, it, it was really cool to tell my mom about that. So <laughs> please keep doing this awesome content. And if you guys are enjoying it, do it down below. Become part of the DCA collective. I love you, buddy. I just made something. So good to see it. <laughs> guys, thanks so much. Keep watching for more. You can get your coverage. DCA gang shirts off of Knife Center. Bye, Joe. Bye.